Hello and welcome to another episode of the Treble Health Podcast. Today's guest is Blake Cadwell. I've known Blake for a few years. Blake has a very unique story of dealing with hearing loss in his family, growing up, and eventually realizing that he could benefit from hearing aids, going online, searching and creating a business, creating Soundly, which is a new platform that allows individuals like Blake to look at the different pros and cons and options of hearing aids and different devices to see how it could benefit their lives. My name is Dr. Ben Thompson, audiologist with Treble Health. Blake, welcome to the podcast and would love to hear more about why you decided to get hearing aids at age 30 and where this all started for you. Thank you, Ben. Um, it's great to great to be here. Thanks for giving the time today out of your busy schedule. My story, you, you hinted at some of it, but my hearing loss runs in my family. My mom, my brother and I all have uh, matching audiograms. So we all have a cookie bite, varying levels of severity, but it's the shape is the same. And, you know, my mom got hearing aids when she was in her early forties. So I was in like junior high and I became aware of my hearing loss at that time. But like so many people, I didn't feel ready. You know, like my, I got by by reading lips and kind of like just found ways to, to work around my hearing loss. And I continued to do that through high school and college and then into my 20s, you know, in my, when I was in the first several years of my career, most of my colleagues knew I had hearing loss. It was like a running joke that, you know, if you weren't talking in front of me, the, that I wasn't going to hear you. And I just got used to it. Uh, and then, you know, 2020 rolled around and like so many people, when masks went on, I suddenly became aware of how much I was reading lips and therefore how much of now I was missing. And, you know, there were several times in my neighborhood or, or close to where I lived that, you know, I was missing. It felt like the majority of the conversation, like looking around, trying to get other cues and feeling incredibly frustrated and, you know, really feeling a much more acute sense of, of what a lot of people experience when they, you know, have more severe hearing loss. It's just missing out on, on so much. And, you know, I, I'd thought about several times throughout my life between junior high and age of 30, I'd thought about getting hearing aids and, you know, thought about going to Costco a few times, thought about, you know, trying to, to approach it. And I just never quite gotten there, never been totally ready. But at age 30 in 2020, I was kind of like pushed over the edge and I started researching. And as you mentioned, I think what I found was, you know, again, what so many people I think experience, which is getting clear concise and accurate information about hearing aids online is really challenging. And a lot of, at least in my experience, there's a lot of mixed signals. So you see like hundred dollar hearing aids, you see like $7,000 hearing aids. There are all these different formats for care. And, you know, the, the entire experience left me feeling like there needed to be a better way to organize all this information and, and bring it to, to people. And so um, I started working on it. Um, that's around the time when we, when we met, I started working on it in, in 2020. And then, you know, here, a couple of years later, two, a little over two years later, I am now launching soundly.com, which, you know, ideally can help solve a lot of those pain points where, you know, most of this information can be found in one experience, hopefully well-organized, worked really hard to make it beautiful and enjoyable to spend time on the site and hope it helps kind of alleviate that, that experience. So that's my story. What comes to mind is the Founders of companies, people who start businesses, entrepreneurs, it's commonly shared that one of the best ways to do that is to scratch your own itch, right? To fix or help the problem that you yourself experienced. And, and this is a very clear example of that. Did you end up getting hearing aids? And what did you learn from buying your first pair of hearing aids? I did. Um, so shout out to Resound. My, uh, my Resound One hearing aids are my, my current go-to. You can see I wear AirPods when I'm uh, connected. I think so many people do that, but I love my Resound, my Resound One hearing aids. I think I, I've tried a bunch of different products. I started with uh, an over-the-counter kind of direct-to-consumer product. I found that it didn't have enough customization for me, which I think a lot of people experience. In my case, specifically, I, because I have a cookie bite, which is not an, a usual type of hearing loss. I find some of the direct, the products with less customization don't often treat me quite as well. So I started there and then, you know, ultimately I realized I needed something that was fitted by an audiologist and, you know, kind of went through the process. I had an audiologist take my hearing test again, which I had already had taken a couple of different times. And then, you know, 
fitted the product to my to my exact uh, hearing loss, and the results have been amazing. I think as anyone who wears hearing aids knows, it's not always enjoyable. You know, sometimes, you know, I think when I first started, it was very loud and somewhat overwhelming. And then as my ears and my brain became used to it, it became more and more um, enjoyable. But my hearing aids, I think the, the biggest places where I see an impact is one, still there, there are still people wearing masks. And when I'm in environments where people wear masks, it's a complete game changer. I also have a new daughter who goes to sleep earlier in the evening. So communicating with my wife in like lower tones, or if we have friends over in the evening, uh, it's critical for me to wear my hearing aids to be able to engage in the conversation. And then, you know, I think also in professional work context as well, when I'm in groups of people where I'm not kind of one-on-one really looking at them, but maybe in a group of four or five, that, that's where my, my hearing aids really help me a lot as well. The problem that Soundly is working towards solving, it seems to me from what you've shared so far is to provide clarity to that experience of, okay, I finally reached the point where I do want to try hearing aids. In an ideal world, what would that look like for you? And and how is Soundly.com and your platform helping make that process as easy and helpful and accurate as possible. Yeah. So I think just going back to really the inspiration for this is my, my experience as I, as I started um, my own search. And what ultimately happened was probably took me eight to 10 hours of research. And during that eight to 10 hours, I had 12 or 15 tabs open on my, my laptop and I'm, you know, watching YouTube videos and I'm on review sites and I'm on manufacturer websites, trying to get specs and like trying to piece all this together. And what Soundly does is it brings all of that information into one platform, one environment. I can now sort products across brands. You you know, on Soundly, they're both direct to consumer and over-the-counter products like Ergo or Lively. And then you also have traditional products like those from Phonak and Widex and Resound. And you can see them side by side. You can compare them. You can quickly access the kind of feature set. So like you want Bluetooth. All right, here's, here's the, these are the products that have Bluetooth. These are the ones that don't. And then, you know, importantly, you can see some price guidance as well. And it's like, what is the price difference between, you know, an entry level over the counter product or direct to consumer product versus a professionally fitted you know, audiologist product. So, you know, really it's kind of collapsing those 12 or 15 tabs down into one tab and then making the, you know, hopefully taking that, what for me was an eight to 10 hour research process and, and making it something that you can achieve in, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. And of course, you're going to learn more from your audiologist through the process, things like that, but it's bringing all that information to you right there at, at your fingertips. Yeah. Our audiology team has been collaborating with you on this project, as you know, and that's been a, a great industry collaboration as far as I'm concerned, mm-hmm. because when you are trying to do the right thing and you have so much personal experience in, in what's important in the emotions behind this and what kind of customer experience should one have. And we connected because there's also the benefit of having the audiologist, the professional yes. make sense of all this. Because like you said, when the price of devices range from $100 to $7,000, it shows us the wide variety of options yes. and confusion that can come with it. Now, frankly, depending on the hearing profile that you have, the hearing loss, the hearing test, how much it's bothering someone, it would impact how much you should or should not spend on devices, right? And what style should they be? How much have you learned about hearing aids and audiology in the past few years? I mean, so much. I think uh, I've learned a lot about the devices that are available, a lot of it through firsthand. You know, I've tried most of the products that are going to be on the site. I've tried uh, at some, at some level, I think I'm still, you know, very aware. And, you know, one of the reasons that I've loved working with the treble team is I'm still very aware that I'm not an audiologist. This isn't my, you know, traditional background. I have an experience that as a human, I've experienced hearing loss and I've tried a lot of things and I have a sense for what I hope the experience can be for other people who share my situation. But I don't have some of the kind of clinical and traditional training that you and your your team have. So I've really loved to you know collaborate together on the information that's that's available on the site. Get it, just getting your gut check and other audiologists' gut check on different products and be like, this one seemed good for me. Is that true across the board? Are you seeing other people have good outcomes with this product? You know, I think on soundly.com, you know, one of the things that people will find is each product has at the, at the bottom of the product page uh, and 
opinion from an audiologist on some of the pros and cons. And not all of it is positive for every product because not every product is right for every person. So I would say I've learned a lot and I know I know enough that it would be a very strange dinner conversation if you didn't realize the context. Like I have a deep knowledge of, of hearing aids for not being an audiologist, but I, I'm certainly not an audiologist and I really respect kind of the practice, the training and the important work that, that audiologists do to help people's hearing. From your perspective, which is similar to the audience and the listeners, what are the biggest mistakes someone can make when they go to try to buy hearing aids, whether in person or online? What are the biggest risks or mistakes someone can make? I mean, the, the number one thing I would say is, you know, I highly recommend that people start with a product that can be customized at some level. And what I mean by customized is it can be customized to your individual hearing loss, meaning that, you know, for me, I lose um, I, I have a dip in my audiogram. So in my mid tones, that's where I have the most hearing loss. I need a hearing aid that can make those sounds louder, but kind of keep my basses and my, and my um, higher pitch sounds similar. I've tried a handful of products that I would classify as amplifiers or, you know, um, just all they do is they turn everything up. And for me, those products are very uncomfortable. I have the sense that they could hurt me if I wear them for too long. And unfortunately, I think for people who are just getting started, there are a lot of those types of products that get placed in advertisements and kind of put in front of people. And, you know, ultimately, you know, I, I was talking with my aunt not too long ago, who is a hearing aid wearer. And she said that she'd started with one of these brands that was, you know, I think a couple hundred dollars that she and her husband actually both did. And they then had to try to send them back. And of course the return policy was not friendly and they ultimately just kind of lost the money and it was an uncomfortable experience. It didn't really help them. And I, I've seen so many reviews that essentially have that. So I think the first thing is make sure the product is customized. And on soundly.com, we don't include any amplifiers. It's all products that can be customized. Some of them are self-customized and those are the less expensive products. And then some of them are professionally customized, which are the more expensive, but we've left out everything that is just a, a pure you know, amplifier. I think the other piece for me is being collaborative and open to, to getting help from a professional, I think is really important. I can often be a sort of DIY person. I want to figure things out. I want to tinker. I want to, I want to, and there's, there's certainly a place for that. But I also found that my own hearing loss was treated the best when I was in collaboration with an audiologist. So I, I think there's a real place for that. I'm curious where everything will go over the long term and, and maybe technology will make these self-fit hearing aids better and better. But I personally think it's still really valuable to, to have a relationship with an audiologist. Excellent. Thank you. Well, for those who are listening, who are curious, at the time that this video will be published, you can head over to soundly.com and check out what Mr. Blake Cadwell has been working on for the past year plus. And like you've also written many blog articles as, as you've shared, you've done a lot of research on this. So I remember years ago, we had had a discussion right around the time, I believe, when you've had the Resound hearing aids for just a few months and you were asking questions about technology and telehealth and if we can adjust the hearing aids. And you asked a very, what I would call normal question of, okay, so I have these hearing aids, they're connected to my phone. The phone's connected to the internet. Ben, you're an audiologist. Can't you adjust my hearing aids? over the internet. And it opens up this question of which of these technologies have these features or the open ability for audiologists or the company itself to make these remote adjustments, essentially bypassing the clinic and the whole in-person mm -hmm. clinic experience. Now, a year plus after we had that initial conversation, what have you learned about that emerging platform and service delivery model of telehealth? I mean, a, a lot. I, I feel like, you know, one of the main things I've learned is that it's very, it's still very early days, I guess. Um, you know, it's one thing that, you know, is, is clear is that all of the products, the new pro most of the new products, um, and you can see this information, by the way, on, on Soundly, but most of the new products have the ability to be programmed remotely. And, and so you can see clearly the makers of this technology understand the power of remote programming and remote care. It's still today very difficult to get a lot of these products 
you know, delivered entirely remotely. And I have troubles as an exception to that. We're bringing some telehealth to some products through your team on Soundly, which I'm very excited about. I know my personal experience is I live in Los Angeles where it's very difficult to move around and find parking. And it is a strong uh, preference for me to uh, seek telehealth treatment on, on all of my health needs, um, not just my, my hearing loss, but I think especially my hearing loss, because it feels like, you know, the, the convenience will give me the opportunity to, to get more adjustments, to kind of be more collaborative with my audiologist. I know in my experience, I got my initial programming. And I have not actually gone back to my audiologist to tune those hearing aids because, you know, I'm a young dad. There's just like a lot going on in my life. And that's a a four or five hour commitment that I I just haven't been able to make. So, you know, I'm excited about telehealth. I don't think it'll be for everybody. I think certain people will still want that hands-on care, but I think a lot of people can benefit from, you know, fully remote care and programming and, you know, hearing aids delivered to your front door, which really feels like that's where everything's headed. And it seems like there's no reason this category won't have that same way. Yeah, definitely a a modern healthcare experience, having the option for that. Like, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. When I first heard your story, I was, I was captivated. And now to see what you've built over, over the years, uh, it gets me really excited. So let's make a promise that we're always going to think of the the community and what the mm-hmm. end consumer benefits from first. That's definitely both of our company's mission. I, I know of that. So if you have any last words about Soundly and where folks can find you, now's your time. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that as a as a last call. And I think that's probably the piece that I'm the most passionate about is you know, creating experiences that really think of, you know, selfishly people in my position and, you know, I'll be a hearing aid wearer for the rest of my life. My mom will, my brother will, this is an experience that is going to go with me. And the more people are thinking about building experiences for this community, you know, the, the more I think, you know, people will benefit from that. And really that's the way I think the future will, will head. If people want to see Soundly, uh, you can go to soundly.com. Um, the, the whole experience is, is kind of, live there. We're also on social. So if you want to follow us on social, you can kind of scroll to the bottom of the website to see some some links to social. But soundly.com is a great, great place to start. And you know, if you have feedback or ideas or questions about the project, I'd love to hear from you. We're going to be making it better over time. It's just hello at soundly.com. And uh, we'd, we'd love to hear from you about any, any thoughts you have. Excellent. Thank you, Blake, for coming on the Tribal Health Podcast. For you who's listening, make sure to subscribe and check out our other podcast episodes. Take care. 